Have you ever wanted to redesign your desktop icons? Well, today I got you covered because I wanted to try and do it with 3D software. So I started with Google Chrome. I just actually dragged an image in and I pressed Alt R and Alt G to reset the rotation and position. And I pressed seven to go into the top view here. What I started with was just one segment of the outside. So I started with a Bezier curve and I made sure to select it all and subdivide it once. I put that middle vertex right in the center and then I put the other vertices on the other sides. Now it's time to rotate and stretch the handles so that we can match the curve along the top. And then once you're happy with that, you can convert it to a mesh just by typing in convert in your search menu, choosing convert to mesh from curve. Then I created the rest of the mesh by control clicking and filling. Then I need to subdivide each of these segments so that the vertices match up with the other side. <laughs> so I'll just start with seven and I'll do seven on that side as well, or eight. If you select an edge on one side and you just press F, it'll actually fill it for you. So I just did that all the way. And now I have the mesh for that one segment. Now it's time to create the depth, but something that I wanted to do with this one was switch the way the segments rotate. So I'm gonna start with this side. I'm gonna enable proportional editing, G, Z, and just raise it up and it's gonna create this nice curvature here. Now it needs to have a solid base. So that's why I extrude and make sure to press Z again so it goes down on the global and then press SZ zero so that you can scale the bottom to be completely even. And I just drag that up a bit to be more or less even with where the image is. And now we have one segment more or less. And I guess the only thing to do now is smooth it, enable auto smooth. It's looking very nice. So now it's time to create the other three segments. And the way that I'm going to do that is using the spin tool, it's right down here. You just click and drag and then figure out where you want it to go. And then my settings are going to use duplicates and two steps, angle of 240. And now we've got that basic shape set up. So now it's time to create the stuff in the center. What I did with that is just add a mesh, a cylinder, and then scale it to be in line with the white circle. And then I'm going to select the faces on top and on bottom. And then in wireframe where you can see the image still, just press I and then scale it in until it's right even with that blue circle. Now select both of them and then press W and bridge faces and it's gonna chop a hole right through it for you. Now I'm gonna shade smooth, auto smooth. Now it's time to add the little circle in the center. What I'm gonna do with that is add a circle. I'm gonna move it up a little bit, scale it in. And then I'm going to, in edit mode, I'm gonna type in grid fill. And then that's what it's going to be doing. And that, that's perfect. So then I'm gonna grab this vertex and move it up a little bit. We're just gonna create some curvature. That should be fine. I'm gonna shade smooth as always. I'm gonna just bring it down a little bit. And well, now we've got our Chrome icon and now we just need to color it. I'm gonna turn this outliner into an image editor because I never use the outliner. And then I'm gonna pull up Chrome here and now it's time to make some new materials. I'm gonna add three new materials, I added a completely new one on each. And then I'm also going to add in an area light and position it just above the center and crank the size up a little bit and the power as well. So I'm gonna start with this segment right here. I'm just gonna select it by pressing the L key, go under materials and press assign here. And then now with the basic color, I'm gonna press E over this to use the eyedropper tool. And then I'm gonna just hover over this red and the Google Chrome logo to steal that color. And then I'm gonna select this segment over here and I'm gonna assign that to material two. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna assign this one to material three, why not? So now with the material two, it's time to equip the yellow color. And then with material three, it's time to equip the green color. Perfect. Now we need to just work with the center here. So I'm gonna create a new material, base color, turn it to that blue. And now we have essentially what we needed. So I'm gonna switch it to cycles and already it's looking pretty good, but I think I want to mess with it creatively a little bit. This is an example of something you could do. You can just mess with the way the segments interact. Now, of course you could do something like this in a 2D program, but the coolest thing about 3D programs is that you can mess with perspective and pretty much, I mean, anything that you would expect to be able to do in a 3D program. What I did for my original render is just a typical perspective camera. I kept the focal length at something appropriate, and then made sure to change the resolution to 1080 by 1080, and I just framed the icon like I would any shot. And the key here is to go under Film and check Transparent so that you don't get the background in there. It'll just be transparent, as you might expect. Now, after messing with it, this was my final result. You're gonna to need to bring it into Photoshop or GIMP or something similar to size it down and maybe adjust the lighting because it's not really gonna convert well 
to an icon if it's a really high resolution. This was the website that I used to convert the files to .ico files, and that's the file type that you're gonna need if you actually wanna switch out any of these things. So what size should you convert it to? Well, here you can see a chart of the size I converted it to versus how it turned out. It's not easy to see here, but anything bigger or anything even this size actually starts to create some weird harsh edges that kind of, that just don't look good at all. So I actually found 64 by 64 is the best way to go. And then here you can see the result versus the original. And I'm proud to say I actually like my result much better than the original. So how do you actually go about changing the icon? Well, you're gonna have to search for whatever app you're looking for in the search and then right click on it, open file location, and then you're gonna take it, go under properties, change icon, and then browse to your ICO file. Now, you can always go back to the original, it's not that much of a problem, but then once you've got it, click apply. And now that you've got that, you can start making shortcuts. You're gonna to need to repin it to taskbar if you want it to update down there, but that's really all you need to know for most apps. Now, there's some apps, like the Recycle Bin, that are different. They update, they change, and you need two different renders for them. So, so I think this one is even more simple than the Chrome. All you have to do is add a cylinder, and then I just scaled up the top face a little bit. Not that much because it's gonna skew the icon a little bit and it looks really weird, but you just scale out the top face just a little bit. And now I'm just gonna add in a ring cut and drop that down to the bottom here. And then we're gonna bevel that. Excellent, scale, S, shift, Z. I'll, I'll put on the, the shortcuts here. And I just inset this top face a little bit and dropped it down all the way to the bottom. Then I add a subdivision surface and turn on shade smooth. And then this is where you get to add those supporting loops. So just uh, loop cuts all along the sides to kind of tighten up the geometry. You'll find as you go along that some places they're more necessary than others. And whenever you've got a big face in the center, all you have to do is press I to inset. And it's essentially the same thing as a support loop. If you want to adjust the size, you can always go into wireframe, go into vertex select mode, and then just kind of drag it up a little bit. And now we've got what resembles a trash can, so let's start adding some materials. We're gonna need two materials for this one, a glass material and a light material. So the first one's really easy, you just slide the transmission up and the roughness down. And then for the light material, you're just gonna need to take the emission, crank it up, and then turn it to whichever color you need. In this case, it's gonna be green. Then select the loop that you need the light on and then just click assign on that. But the idea here is that this is your empty render and then with the mission you can just swap that over to red to make the full render. And to create the trash inside, all I did was just add a cube, scale it down inside, kind of rotate it around a little bit. I subdivided it, cranked it up to like uh, five. And I just went under the smooth here and swapped that to randomize. And then you just click on this little icon here. And I mean, well, it doesn't get much easier than that, does it? And so then I go into wireframe and just kind of mess with where it goes. And then I duplicated it once and then free rotated it around. And then once you're semi happy with it, just make sure that it looks good in the render because it probably doesn't. And then you're gonna mess with these vertices with the proportional editing on to make sure they're not going through the sides or at least not poking out. And then you can also use that strategy to fill out the other parts where it's not reaching the sides so that it looks like it's really full. Looking good. And so now for lighting, what I did was I added an area light up top, which then I rotated towards the trash can and I sized it up, turned the power up. And I also added another area light, which I moved off to the side, rotated that, made it a rectangle and then increased the size on the Y, increased the power so that it's creating these cool light bar effects. And I duplicated it, moved that as well so that there's a double light bar effect and it's getting harder to see with all the noise. But done right, you'll get a nice sleek looking light bar like this. So now, how do you go about applying the thing to the Recycle Bin logo here? And the way you're gonna do that is, is you're gonna go under themes and then go to desktop icon settings and then here you can find your icons for the recycle bin full and the recycle bin that is empty. So the very first thing you're gonna do is search for your icons and then apply them. But you'll notice that when you 
empty the trash can and things like that, that it might not update. And that's because you have to do this other thing. You gotta go to the register editor. You just type in REG and it should pop up. And you're gonna need to browse to this. Computer, H key underscore current underscore user, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, Explorer, CLS ID, the one that starts with 645, and then default icon. And under here, you'll find three items. It's just gonna show your icons and then dot ico, but you're gonna need to add a comma zero and then press OK and do that for all of these for it to work. Once you've got that, just click X. If you click to empty your recycle bin, it should update just fine. So with some time and tweaking, I imagine it'd be really fun to create a whole set of icons for everything that you have that all follows a certain theme. Perhaps you could make it all metal or you could make it all gold. It's really up to you. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you find this helpful and have a great day.